Hello everybody, I'm Sarah, you can call me Pixie. Today I am going to be recommending to you some of my favorite five-star reads. If you're into fantasy and manga, how about Witchbuster? Bye. What is it by? Uh, Jung Man Cho. I hope I'm saying that right. This book is basically about a group that hunts down witches and uh, the main character that you see on the cover of this book, his sister is actually a witch. So things are interesting because he runs across his sister a few times and um, doesn't quite catch her. He's trying to save her still and bring her back to the witch buster side of things, but she's not budging. So there's some interesting relationships, uh, some funny uh, handling of capturing some of these witches, and uh, the, the drawings, they're, the, at least this copy, it's black and white, but the, the characters are kind of cool. And then, and then you get like outbursts of emotion. If you're looking for a horror or thriller, how about Witch 13 by Patrick Delaney? I got this in exchange for an honest review from the publisher and oh my goodness. At several points, I usually don't do horror, but there were several points that I was freaked out. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting it to be that, that far into like the horror and, and what I, I can't handle. Um, the way the witch is portrayed in this book is like, She's pure horror. She is the thing of nightmares. She eats children and basically terrorizes people. Um, yeah, this, this, this was a scary one. Uh, I had, I had day I had daymares about this one and uh, was jumping at shadows. So, Patrick, you did a great job <laughs> of scaring scaring me at least. Um, I I was petrified, but at the same time, like I had to take these breaks from the the scary, but I at the same time wanted to keep reading to find out what was happening next, and that is a strange feeling that I have never had with horror. Usually I get scared and I leave the room. I like, I'm done. Like with my husband and some of the horror movies that he likes to watch. Nope. I'm gone. Don't need to know. Uh, bye. Don't want to know. And so to have that experience with this book that like, oh, this is, this is getting creepy. Oh, I'm gonna have nightmares. Oh, geez. Oh, but also, what's going to happen? How is this going to resolve? How are we going to... Are we going to defeat this witch? Like, or does the witch win? And I, I guess, I, you know what? I, I don't want to, I don't want to speak more on um, if the witch wins or if we win because that would be a spoiler um but basically this like witch of like old old ancient society of witches or something is being transported but she's like in this special container that is strapped down locked all kinds of this and that to try and keep her contained, but the truck is in a wreck and she gets out and then begins terrorizing the nearby town and of course it's a dark and stormy night 
and uh, we, we follow one of the police, I think she's a deputy, uh, as she kind of like investigates this witch and what is happening and tries to get to the bottom of things. It is, it is quite interesting. And then uh, things start going wrong at the police station. <laughs> If you're looking for a good nonfiction based on a true story, this one that I'm about to bring up was kind of popular uh, some time ago uh, when it got a movie made from it. And that book is Marley and Me by John Grogan. This book made me cry. It is probably the only one that has successfully made me cry, and that's probably because it's based around this dog, <laughs> and I love dogs and animals, and gosh darn, this dog just worked his way into my heart, and this book covers his life, and you can guess where it ends. <laughs> so have the Kleenex ready when you're coming up to the end. <sighs> the trouble and the fanatics and gosh darn, um, the awesomeness of this dog and the awesomeness of John Grogan and his family for giving this dog a home and not giving up on him even though apparently the trainers wanted to because he was just a whole other thing. <laughs> Did not want to be trained. Um, yeah, I loved it. You'll love it. Just be ready for it to pull at the heartstrings. If you're into video games and reading, may I recommend Sword Art Online by Reki Kawahara. Uh, there are a few different formats of these stories that I have found. There's the light novels that I've been reading. There are also some manga, um, like side stories that go beyond what the anime touches on, as far as I can tell. Um, I actually haven't started this one, so I can't say if it's covered in the anime somewhere, but, um, I, this one does cover the anime, the light novel. Um, Sword Art Online is about a game called Sword Art Online that is this massive multi-online player game, role-playing game. It is like one of the first full dive VR system games and the creator of the game, for some reason, nobody knows why, has made it so that it's a death game. You can't log out. When the game launches, approximately all 10,000 players log in. It was a limited release. Apparently he did that on purpose because he had um, alternate intentions of not letting people go. And the only way they can escape the game is by beating the game. But there's this castle that they have to make it through that's basically a hundred floors and they have to make it to the 100th floor and beat the boss on that floor. So it's a little death game but the, the characters are lovable. There's a blooming romance between the two main, um, the, the male and the female characters. And you can't help but cheer them on. Um, we meet some other fun characters along the way of all different ages and races and whatnot and 
by races, I don't just mean elves and dwarves or whatever, because Sword Art Online actually doesn't have elves and dwarves. It's all sword play. Um, but definitely a uh, recommended read. If you are interested in kind of a cozy, almost, like, I'm recommending a book that is the first book of a series. So the I believe there's going to be adventure, but the adventure is just getting started. So there's a lot of training and figuring stuff out happening in this one. Um, but there's also kind of a side romance uh, with a fantasy undertone. If something along those lines is uh, calling your name, The Revelation of Light and Dark by Sawyer Bennett. I listened to the audiobook that just came out and uh, let's see, actually I think they might now all have an audiobook now. I should have double checked before I started recording. I did not. I failed. Um, but I know that like the audiobooks came out way after the books were released, but they were so they were kind of being released in su succession. So like you had the uh, there's like a prequel, then you had book one, and then the next week there was a book two, and then the next week there was book three, and then the next week was book four. There were some gaps between some of the later ones, but I think by now, because we're almost halfway through August, uh, I think they might all be out. Uh, I will hopefully double check and put something like on the screen somewhere indicating if they are all currently out or when the last uh, publishing date is for the last audiobook format if you wanted uh, the last book in audio. In this book we have a not quite a young, a young adult but like She's basically just starting out, uh, has been working in a coffee shop for a while now. She's kind of worked her way up and now the owner wants to sell the coffee shop and he wants her specifically to buy it but also knows that like she might not be able to but wanted to offer it to her first um, and he's selling it to try and get the money to help his son out with his son's business adventure thing but through the steps of trying to get the financing to buy this coffee shop she runs into her love interest but they hate each other but you can it's written in a way that you can tell that there is going to be something there uh, and, and they're kind of gonna turn from, they're not enemies, so it's not enemies to lovers, but it's more like haters to lovers. But So they hate each other for like the entirety of at least the first book. I still haven't read the second book and I am very, very <laughs> upset by this fact. <laughs> Things have been crazy in life right now and I've not been doing much reading for the last two weeks. Yes, yeah, so we're like two weeks into August, almost. This is what, the 12th? 12th, 13th? Saturday? 12th. So, but uh, after listening to this first book, I am very excited to get the next book. This girl learns uh, through this awful, awful man that she despises. She can see daemons and fae. They're not hallucinations. She's not mentally ill. She's not challenged. Uh, no, that's, that's reality. But she can see through their glamours and whatever so that they appear human to, we'll say the mundane, the, the normal humans. Um, so they kind of figure that, okay, she can see through the glamours. Like, there's gotta be a reason for this. She's gotta be a key to something big that's going to be happening. Uh, and so it's kind of like, what is this big thing that's going to happen? I'm feeling the buildup. Let's get to the, to the big thing. 
and and then and then the ending was like totally unpredictable did not see that coming i don't know if that was the big thing that uh, she's going to have to deal with I, well it's something that she's going to have to deal with but i don't know if it's the big thing or I'm thinking because there are six more books in this series, I'm thinking it's just a little piece of the big thing, which makes me scared to find what the big thing is, but at the same time I'm all the more excited to figure out what this big thing is and how we're gonna deal with it. And so I really want to, like, after reading this, I want to get to the next one and probably the next one and the next one and the next one, but Start with uh, The Revelation of Light and Dark by Sawyer Bennett. We have some adventure fantasy on this list. I shouldn't say some. I, I picked one. Uh, the City We Became by N.K. N. Jemison. I read her, what is it, The Stone Sky, the some Fifth Earth something series. I read the first book back in like 2016, 2017, somewhere. Loved it. Finished it in a one day, like a one sitting kind of read. It, I listened to the audiobook. I never stopped it um, as far as I can remember. But then I forgot pretty much everything by the time I was ready to sit down and read the second book. So I tried reading the first book, couldn't get back into it. But um, a couple of years ago, I read her... Um, the city we became and like the creativity that went into this plot and the character development I mean I guess they kind of go together because the characters kind of lead the plot in a sense um like wow the characters of the book represent like different boroughs of New York City and there's one character that I think is supposed to represent New York City itself and like they're meeting each other and things and there's this like evil creature from another dimension thing that is trying to trick them and fool them and make them fall apart and never let the the city basically come to life. It's trying to kill the city and never let it breathe. And there are these other cities from outside that then um, a couple of them meet up and try and help and block and defend against this evil creature dimensional travel thing to help New York City come to life and uh, it, it's it's an adventure <laughs> and the way that like I've never been to New York so I don't I can't say that this is accurate but from like what I've heard of New York and like the differences between the boroughs like the characterization for each character that represents these boroughs is spot on. Like, I never would have, like, actually put it into a character. Like, I don't know, that just blew my mind and uh, I very much enjoyed the book. If you want some politics with your adventure and fantasy, we have two books. Uh, the first one will be Furies of Calderon by Jim Butcher, which if you've seen some of my recent uh, videos, you'll know that I just recently started reading this series and love it. I was borrowing these books from the library got into a kind of cross path with like somebody else that was reading the series at the same time. Go figure, my library has two copies of the first book, but then only has one copy of every book thereafter. So I think there were two of us that about at the same time had the first book checked out and then I beat this person to book two and then was trying to read through it, but life. 
Uh, so it ended up renewing once, but then they put a hold on it, so I had to return it and and was forced to finish it in like six weeks, but I really should have finished it in the three. That shouldn't have been a problem! I was also reading like five or six books, I think, at the same- four? Maybe four? Anywhere between four and six. I seem to have an issue of starting books and not finish, finishing them quickly anyways. But in this, uh, it was started by a concept of Roman legions and Pokemon and from that we have this like army that is trying to attack us and trying to take down the current ruler of the area and the Furies that are these like elemental spirit things that you kind of connect with. Um, so they're kind of like Ash and Pikachu, but everybody has their own Pikachu kind of thing. No, they're not all Pikachus. It's not all electric. It's, uh, you have wind, earth, water, and I think steel was the fourth one. You don't see a whole lot of the fourth one. But there's all these different elemental furies and you kind of connect with them. But there's this boy that we follow that has no connection. He's like 14, I think, when we first meet him in this book. And he he hasn't he hasn't bonded to a fury yet, which is unusual to say the least, that he does not have a connection to a fury. And so he is teased and like tortured basically by the other kids because he doesn't have a fury. But we've got this like political background going on and uh, everything comes to a head when we have these like non evil people and this army coming down on this unsuspecting city that is not expecting to be overthrown at this time, but they're trying to overthrow it basically so they can take down the current ruler and make his rule very much uncertain at this time. I very much enjoyed the, uh, I think I enjoyed the adventure more, actually. I was about to say the politics, but I think I enjoyed the adventure more. There's a little more of the adventure underlying. Yeah. And then the second one, and if you've watched my channel basically at all, I probably recommend this book more than I should, just out of fairness. Like, some people can't stop recommending Brandon Sanderson books. Uh, I can't stop recommending The King's Dark Tidings by Cal Cade with the first book of Free the Darkness. Love me some Reskin. <laughs> the main character is Reskin. He's basically been raised by an army. Uh, the, the like elite of elite of elite of an army. He's had these special trainers, uh, two masters, and he knows nothing, pretty much, of how the world works beyond this fort where he's been raised. And he has been trained from, like, morning to night. And it never ends. But there's a purpose behind this. What is the purpose? You don't find out for a few books what the purpose was. Few would be three. I think it's actually a couple. I think you might find it in book two. I think it's in book two. Reign of Mandus. Yes, I think it's in Reign of Mandus that we figure out, oh, this is probably what and why things happened. And then you get a little more in book four. But anyways, we're talking about Free the Darkness, which is book one. And now there also is a prequel that you can read I actually would not read it as a prequel, and that one is Mage of No Renown. I would probably read it either before or after book two, 
or like in publication order, which was like after book four and just before book five. Do not read book five. The uh, Demons and Dragons. Why am I blanking on the title? The, the, the fifth one. Do not read the fifth book without reading Mage of No Renown. That is a no-no. You will be severely lacking <laughs> in needed knowledge to in fully enjoy book five. Basically, just, just read Mage of No Renown somewhere before book five. Basically all you need to know. <sighs> Anyways, coming down. Uh, so, Reskin having no knowledge of how the real world, real world works, uh, has some interesting interactions with people in the outside of the fort once he is actually released. Free the darkness, hint, hint. Um, that's where the title comes from. It it is hilarious sometimes at his like misunder complete misunderstanding of these situations and scenarios that he finds himself in and I just can't get enough of it. But even more, he learns about friends has a completely wrong idea of how you find friends and how people are defined as your friend. But he, he, he'll eventually figure it out. Um, I love Reskin. And he becomes like the best friend anybody could ever have. He's one of the good guys, don't worry. But there, he's, he's been released so that he can fix essentially the political stuff going on. Uh, but because of how he's released from the fort, I mean, it happens in the beginning, but I would actually argue that telling you how he gets out of the fort might be a spoiler. Because it is just so unseen and so unanticipated that this would happen in order for him to leave the fort and whatnot. Um, but what was I saying? But he's one of the good guys and so he doesn't realize what the political temperature is exactly or what his role in this political mess is and he ends up looking for one of these elite warriors. I wish I could say more. Uh, one of these elite warriors that uh, I'll say left the fort. There's there's more to it though. You have to read the book. And uh, is trying to track him down essentially through Free the Darkness. And uh, find some answers and it's quite it's quite exciting and interesting if you want some YA adventure uh, try A Blade So Black by L.L. McKinney this is another book that you've probably heard me talk about uh, have I? I may have talked about it a bit I know in some of the vlogs that I have from earlier this year, maybe late last year, I was talking about it and Wah! it's an Alice in Wonderland retelling and it does it in such a way that uh, it it's again, it's another like, wow, this is this is interesting. This is a new new twist on Alice in Wonderland. And you have a, a young girl, essentially Alice who is fighting nightmares that come over from Wonderland uh, into our human realm. And her protector trainer is the Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter used to live in Wonderland, 
but the queen that he followed went a little mad and he went along with things and things got really dark in Wonderland and so he was actually exiled from Wonderland so he can't really go far into Wonderland or return really to Wonderland. He has been exiled to the human realm and he must find help find humans to help him deal with these nightmares. But some things are brewing within Wonderland and uh, things are going dark again. I'm also so excited because we'll have the third book of the series out on September 19th. I have read the first two and I have been patiently waiting <laughs> for the next one. <laughs> it's not been patiently, no. I don't know how many times I keep double checking to see if the publishing date moved, like, by some miracle. <laughs> but I have, yeah. So the third book, uh, A Crown So Cursed, will be out on September 19th and, uh, yeah. Okay, and our last two are some YA political fantasies. First up is Hunter by Mercedes Lackey. Lakey. I'm blanking on how to say her name. Anyways, uh, I got this in exchange for an honest review from the publisher, and then I did grab books two and three, Elite and Apex, and I've read the whole series and I very much enjoyed it. This book is about some essentially monsters that come over into the human dimension and they're trying to eat us. They want to destroy us. We're yummy num num treats to them. But we have hunters in areas and cities to protect the people living there from these monsters. And Joy is our main character that we follow. It starts off as a hunter in like a remote mountain village, but then due to some politics has to get called into the main city, Apex. I think, I think Apex was the name of the city and uh, has to fight monsters there because reasons. And Everything that these hunters do is recorded. Each hunter gets their own channel on TV and the normal, the normal, the people who aren't hunters watch this like they're watching sports. This is their entertainment. They watch the hunters fight these monsters and they watch the hunters in their normal, day-to-day -day life, like out on a date or stuff kind of thing. Eh. I would not want to be a hunter in that world and I don't want to be recorded all the time. But there's also like voice recordings and whatnot in offices so like when she meets with her uncle for the first time they're kind of speaking in code right off the bat because she knows there's something going on and uh, yeah, apparently somebody's trying to overthrow her uncle and undermine his authority and overthrow the safety of the people as we know it and make it seem like things are safer than they are. Yay for politics. And the last YA political fantasy, but certainly not the least book on this list, The False Prince by Jennifer A. Nielsen. This book... I initially got the audiobook from my library, could not stop listening to it. It is about a boy who is found and actually it's a group of boys but we follow one of them in particular where they are trained to be the quote unquote missing presumed dead prince because the king, queen, and the last remaining prince have all been murdered, poisoned, they're dead, gone. 
I almost gave a spoiler. Um, okay, reorganizing thoughts. This book stirs emotions. And of course, there's politics in here because whoever, of course, finds this missing prince will then basically be able to control the kingdom because they've trained this boy to be the prince and not necessarily think of things the way the prince would. But the, the boys have to know just enough to pass the muster. And, uh, yeah. I, I don't know, I can't think of really anything more to say about this and to, to do this book justice as to like how enthralling this was and how unput downable it was. Like, I got so into this and so antsy that first time listening to that audiobook, I was pacing my hallway in my house because I was fearing for this boy's life and how things were working out and how things were going to resolve themselves at the end and I was like, yeah. I was also talking to the book, talking to the characters and so my husband who was playing a video game at the time kept going, huh, what? And I'm like, no, 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 not you. I'm listening to the book, I'm talking to the characters. <laughs> I need things to go well. I need them to survive. So, yes, I definitely recommend The False Prince. Uh, actually, I recommend all three of the books, which you also have. Apparently, I had this on my shelf upside down. Uh, the Runaway King and then The Shadow Knight. The Shadow... Wow. The Shadow Throne. I'm looking in my screen and it's backwards and somehow thrown backwards looked like night. I'm usually better at reading backwards than this. I swear. But this whole series was uh, pretty much a binge read. I went out, bought all three. I don't think I reread this because I got them so quickly after listening to the audiobook that I then read them in succession. I just went right on to book two. Start with The False Prince. <laughs> if you like YA political fantasy, this is good. You're gonna like it. So, those are some of my favorite five star books of all kinds of genres and moods for you. I hope you can find one of them that piques your interest and, uh, and intrigues you to pick it up. Calls your name. Read me. Read me. Let me know if any of them were success- if my descriptions of any of them, I guess, were successful because I don't know that I did half of them justice in terms of what the book actually holds for you and the love that I'm sure you will feel for some of them, depending on your mood, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if any of them call your name and I will see you soon in a new video. TTFN!